Hi, I'm Mark from Property Ventures. Welcome to this week's New Zealand Property Podcast, where we interview the property expert around New Hello, Zealand. Um, welcome back to our uh, podcast and video series, where we will be here every two weeks from now, I promise you. Um, and we have with us today a good friend of mine, Renee McLean, who's been has got his own valuation uh, business. He's um, very experienced in what he does, and I not sure how many franchises you own. Well, was it only the one? Uh, just one, yes. Just yeah. one. So we're part of Property in Depth, so yep. I, I look after Manukau City. Yep, so we'll talk, talk to Renee about that and how that's changed, uh, how valuations have changed in the last uh, few years. And he's also a very active investor, so we'll talk afterwards and we'll ask Renee about what he's up to in his own little world and with this, uh, the way the market is right now. And uh, we'll uh, maybe finish off with a bit of US investing, which she does over there. So uh, welcome to the show. All right, thanks, Mark. Yeah, yeah, good to be here. Yeah, good, good work. Um, mm. Thank you for your little wee gift and, uh, and cards there, and I'm sure I'll pass them on to some of the people that want to want to talk to you. But we'll just start off uh, first of all, as most of you watch, you will know, but many of you won't know if you haven't had to buy a property or uh, get evaluation to refinance or something like that in the last wee while. Uh, the industry's changed a lot in the last uh, 12 months or so. You can't it used to just be you'd ring up your mate at the register of value and go, Renee, mate, I've got a, you know, a deal here, a property for you to value. Um, it doesn't happen anymore. Tell us what's happened and what the changes are. Yes, uh, it certainly has changed a lot. And um, as I mentioned before, we were we could see this coming in the industry uh, about just over 10 years ago when property and depth uh, started. And um, about three, two to three years ago, we had something called, um, we just call them the, the panels um, uh, startup, which is essentially a middle person between the client and the banks, um, and um, they allocate the valuations to a valuer who is approved uh, on the panel, uh, like we are for the panels with all the banks. Um, but it's more like a random allocation of someone who does that area. Uh, so more often than not, you need to use this panel system. You need to go to your bank, the bank will order it, it will go through the panel system and be allocated to the valuer. So the idea is that it's um, it's a few degrees of separation. So um, uh, I mean, I think it's a little bit pointless. There were probably after the GFC, all the rogues were um, disappeared or thrown out of the industries, the, the valuations, the mortgage brokers and the, the agents, most of the rogues disappeared then. But it is uh, it is another way to ensure uh, that, it's, um, that it's a totally unbiased uh, valuation. So, so even if someone goes um, along to you and says, hey, Renee, I want to need a valuation, you have to send them to the panel? Uh, well, I don't send them to the panel. I, the bank does that, but um, they need to check with the bank. Sometimes the bank will say, yeah, that's fine, uh, especially if that person's done the valuation before. Um, but more often these days, the bank might say, no, we've got to put it through the panel. And, and then it may or may not end up with me. So at that. least it goes one of those situations where it does go back to you because you've done it before. How, how does the panel decide what value? Is there a 10 on the list and they just go, your turn, your turn? Uh, essentially, yes, yeah, that's yes. basically how it works. Yeah, right. on, on um, uh, it's, it's supposed to be a random sort of allocation. Okay, and as you said, it was the main reason because uh, there were not only, not only an evaluation uh, world, there were rogues all around the property world 10, 10 12 years ago. Uh, is that just, a, just to make it more accountable? Uh, yeah, there is more accountability, but I, I would say the main reason was the, it was pushed from Australia. So most of our banks are owned by yeah. Australia uh, banks, and um, it's kind of the system that they had been using. So um, we seem to be following more along that path. Okay. Okay, well obviously the, uh, we had a two and a half years of craziness in Auckland. Uh, the last year's got a wee bit crazy, oh, quiet, so you're obviously not writing as many as you were a year ago. Uh, um, how is it now compared with, say, before three years ago? Is it is it the stock's down and where it is, or is it a, I mean, people, I think people forget in the industry at the moment what it used to be like before two and a half, or before three years ago, before sure. the, um, the last uh, raise sort of happened. 
So, yeah, how, how many yes, you do you do an evaluation? Then what, what are they maybe for? Um, revalue or new homes? or um, Probably refinancing is, is still most of the work we do. So it means that, that we're perhaps not slowing down as much as real estate, which uh, real estate agents are based pretty much solely on turnover of properties transacting, which has um, fallen a lot. Uh, whereas the refinancing is a little bit more steady. It's, it's just as people are... Uh, needing to refinance for various reasons. It might be doing extensions, um, buying a new boat, new car, um, going with a different bank. Uh, there, there could be all sorts of reasons. Buying an investment property, um, uh, valuing an existing portfolio, or one or two properties if they're selling a property to make sure the equity's there. So there, there's, um, there's a lot of reasons why people might need some sort of refinancing. Yeah. I was going to say now where the market, you know, it's a wrong person to ask this question, but now where the market is, is it a good time to be refinancing right now or have you missed the boat a little bit? I know you're going to say, oh, of course you want to refinance, of course you need to get a valuation, but um, <laughs> take an impartial view. Um, yeah. yeah, I think most investors in terms of their own homes are, are probably, uh, there probably hasn't been much change. I, I mean, I think uh, a year ago on average things are showing um, um, they're, they're quite similar, and um, that's that's an average, and not taking into account uh, the investment type areas, which I think have dropped a bit because the investors have just more or less just about just appeared out of the market in those areas. Um, and uh, but the homeowners have kind of stepped in, so so they're they're kind of shoring up those invest areas, whereas. Usually, when there's a downturn in, in the market, those invest areas like Clendon and Mangareva, they'll drop um, 20 to 30 percent. Um, but uh, because there'll be a whole lot of mortgagee sales, there'll be there'll be investors that have got 10 properties and that, are, that lose the equity. And, and um, but that's just not happening at the moment. It's, it's uh, I guess what you would call it is a very soft landing, and um, it's simply because we've. Uh, still got the demand for houses, a shortage of housing. It's the first time ever, uh, I think in history, that prices have gone down where there's been positive immigration. And, mm. and I mean, it's not just positive, it's absolutely massive, it's enormous. Mm. So, yeah, it's interesting because yeah. the, there's not a, also you'd expect a massive amount of houses to be on the market, but I don't see that at the moment. I know some agents around town are running around trying to get a listing because they, they can't get listings still, yeah. which usually yeah. the market would be going booming if that was the situation. Sure. Yeah. So that, that's certainly different. Um, just, just going on to what you see, what I'm seeing from my side is, since the new LBR rules have come in, obviously the, the high rental areas of South Auckland and West Auckland, as far as sort of Henderson, Massey and those sort of areas, I guess, have dropped, whether it's five or ten, I don't know, sort of somewhere around those sort of figures. Sure, yeah. Uh, I, don't deal a lot, I don't deal a lot in the North Shore, but um, people will be saying that's dropped a wee bit. But uh, other areas, good areas I've seen, good area, good property, equal, still good prices. What do you see out there? You get right with every day. Yeah, I, I think that, that sounds fairly accurate. Um, yeah, again, I don't really work in the North Shore either, but um, I think um, there were some big premiums being paid by Asian investors and um, buyers in that area, and, and I think... Um, areas like that, and Buckland's Beach to a lesser extent perhaps, but um, it's been a lot more difficult for Chinese people to get money out of China, so um, uh, there, there has been an effect there. Uh, yeah. um, but I, I think a lot of areas, uh, just standard areas where there's a lot of home owners, uh, I, I don't think those areas have really been affected all that much. There's not the premium or the, those crazy sort of auction prices that, that were happening every now and again. Um, people are not feeling desperate to buy, but um, it's on the other hand, there's not a lot of stuff on the market. Right. Um, but there's certainly not, you're not seeing a lot of mortgage auctions uh, and, and a, uh, you're not seeing many desperate sellers. Uh, so. I was, at, I was at an auction the other day, my friend was selling, selling a place in West Harbour, a family home, and uh, it actually surprised me I, um, for what the expectations were, what our agents had told them, and you know, 1.1 was a good price, and they were happy with that, and ended up going, started bidding at 800, but went up to 
won seven they sold at right. four, so uh, they, were, yeah. they were extremely happy, but there weren't yeah. many sold on, on the day, but there, theirs was one that, that did sell, so you know, right. a good, good result for them, I guess. Yeah. But again, a good area, um, I don't class West Harbour as West Auckland, no. so it's got its yeah. own sort of market let going there and there and beyond, I guess. Uh, mm. So, um, yeah, so, so what a, what a, um, so what are you doing in the market then at the moment? I know you're an active investor. You have done small developments before, and you've got your own property. We're not going to get into that. Uh, but what what's uh, what are you doing in the market where we are? You know, right now in sort of August 2017. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm not doing anything in the Auckland market. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. If I buy an investment property, I, I like it to be making money from day one, and. Um, there's, uh, there's been no chance of that for a very long time, really. So you're able to catch your main uh, idea is cash flow for your portfolio? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we've got uh, several properties that provide us with ongoing equity um, that, that are just ticking along nicely in, in this sort of market. Uh, you hardly ever get vacancies, mm. so um, they're, they're ticking along nicely. And so our focus in the last, probably the last three to Five years has been buying properties in Memphis uh, in America. Well, tell us, uh, tell us about that. What sort of uh, we hear a lot of stories about it, and well, uh, I'll cover. We were what I've seen some of the best have the pitfalls of it, but um, what sort of yields are you getting over there? So yields we're looking at um, the the minimum gross yields we're getting in a, in a slightly better area is seventeen and a half percent. It's not bad. Yeah, not bad through to 40% uh, in, in a not such a good area. Uh, so that's gross and um, we've been working on some spreadsheets doing net yields now that we've we've accumulated a few properties for some time. And so they're, they're looking like a minimum of about 10% net to about 20% net. Uh, so the expenses really are obviously pretty high, you're talking 7% to 20% I guess. Um, Net, net expenses. Yeah, what's the uh, main expense for being a spider? Um, well, I suppose I mean, you've got all the normal expenses, but the thing is, when you are buying off such a low price price point, so yeah. so our cheapest one was was fourteen thousand. So, uh, but you're still going to pay your rates and that sort of thing, and and so your rates and insurance is still going to be at least a thousand, and as a proportion of that price, it's a relatively exactly. high amount. Yeah. So, um, it's no different than New Zealand, I guess. If you can buy and I'm not picking on Tokoroa, but a place like Tokoroa or Kara, your expenses are pretty well the same as if you buy in Auckland. Sure, but, um, yeah, so, yeah. So, the yeah. yield, uh, yield subsidy thing in the way, yeah. like a, a cheaper yeah. property. So, having said that, things like repairs and maintenance are cheaper. Uh, everything's cheaper. Like to build a house, they, they can, you can get brand new houses from about 100,000 wow. over there. Like, brand, like a good brand new brick yeah. and tile with garaging and all, all of that sort of thing, which you might see in Danny Moore or, or Flatbush for yeah, sort well. of uh, well over a million. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> where we gone yeah. wrong over here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's a whole different thing. So, yeah, to us, that provides a good opportunity, and um, I think the actual uh, capital gains over there are a bonus, but I think there's, there's more chance of capital gains. Um, from this point, where we've reached a peak in Auckland, yep. uh, and um, whereas uh, clearly, if you're getting those sort of returns, there is still room for the, the properties to grow in value. I suppose there's plenty of uh, opportunities to grow your portfolio there, whether you're using your rent, I'm not sure what you're doing, but using your rent or even just investing uh, back over there because of the cheaper, the cheaper buy-in price. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, in Auckland, you, you you will usually find your property doubles in value over ten years, uh, which is great. You've got that equity, um, but over there, um, your rent, your, your property will be paid off in ten years and mm. entirely. So uh, you've effectively doubled um, the, the the value, and, and you've got that in cash. Mm. Getting a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred yeah. US a, a month, that's all yeah. cash in the bank. Yeah, yeah, no, all good. The uh, I remember a year or so ago, a few a couple of my clients have bought a few properties there, and the biggest dramas they had, and one in particular was the property management. Right. And like any property manager anywhere, even in New Zealand, there's yes. good and there's not so good. Absolutely. And, yeah. And I, yeah. Think, I suppose being so far away, yeah, uh, liable 
you're out there to be taken advantage of. Sure. How do you yeah. make sure that doesn't happen? Yeah, uh, I, I think referrals and word of mouth um, are, the, are the key thing. Um, it's very difficult to go over there and pave the way yourself if, mm. if you're going over to the other side of the world and, and never live there or whatever. So it, it's just a matter of um, uh, getting referrals from other people, use, using other people that have proven to be good. Um, but you've still got to keep that in check. I mean, you know, I think there, there's the old story of um, someone gets someone's good, they get recommended, and then they just get overloaded, they try and take on more people, and, yeah. and, and they, they go under, or they, their service uh, uh, goes downhill, or their prices go up, yeah. and all of that. So um, uh, everything like that's still going to be kept in check. But we're, we're pretty happy with the people we use. Uh, but I, I don't think it's any different to New Zealand. There, there's good ones and there's bad ones. Yeah. Uh, so, um, okay. Nice okay. Yeah, I'll see where and, um, yeah. Yeah. Very good. And I guess the uh, head of bonuses are uh, over there. Um, taxable expense, I guess, going to visit your properties yeah, over there. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we had a great trip over there in April. Um, Memphis is a, is a uh, town with a lot of history and, and a lot of character. Right. Uh, so, we, we really enjoy it. He's got something going right. Um, Renee, every time I see him on Facebook, he's either surfing in Hawaii or at, at uh, somewhere around the United States or somewhere in Europe. So you've got something going, <laughs> going yeah. okay there, Renee. <laughs> um, uh, very, very good. So um, just coming back to New Zealand, as I said, we're always we're about six weeks away from um, at a uh, maybe, maybe you go or an election anyway. <laughs> um, and it's getting near the end of winter. Where do you see things at the moment? Uh, it has been quiet, you know, and it's traditionally will be quiet. It's traditionally quiet before, and uh, an election coming up. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, where do you see things? Maybe after after that, and maybe for the next twelve months. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to hold you to this. Yeah, it is quiet, and um, and that's typically in winter. The turnover is low. Um, where there's good demand, win winters uh, offer often a, a really good time to sell because you haven't got as much competition. Um, but um, this winter, the whole market slowed down a lot. Um, so I, I'm just going back to the last election where we voted in Portugal, I think, and um, it was um, after that things just absolutely rocketed in 2015. So, so that's not going to happen again um, because there was there was the prices were at a lot lower price point. We've, we've kind of we've got the banking restrictions. Um, so um, the main thing is at the moment that is the banking restrictions. Uh, they they've just really slowed things down, and um, the challenge for uh, any government is is to be able to manage that and to make sure that uh, first home buyers still kind of get a chance mm -hmm. to yep. buy in. Um, uh, they certainly made it difficult for investors. So in, in that sense, they've uh, I guess they've reduced the competition for. Investors, although long-term investors probably still have a reasonable amount of equity, but yeah. the forty percent is it's getting up there. That is quite a lot of equity. Yeah, so have to come up people, with. especially early investors in the early days. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So my view is, I think um, once we're done invested with the election, um, I think National probably will get in. It's but not by a lot, but. <laughs> um, Labour, despite the Jacinda effect, um, yeah. with the, the Greens and everyone, I think they they and, and this latest furore of um, annoying the Australians uh, yeah. hasn't helped them. Next four or five weeks, you got to be really interesting to see if uh, they come off the board. Labour come off the board. Yeah. The bubble they've been on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so I think yeah, probably National is going to get back, and that'll probably give people just a little bit of confidence that things are just going to keep ticking along. Um, and I think we may get a, a little bit of a lift in values, maybe maybe sort of perhaps up to about 5% coming in, um, possibly just bef starting just before Christmas and, and going through to about uh, April or so. And um, But I, I don't see it being sustained, um, going forward being sustained lift in prices. I think after that it, it's possibly going to just flatten off again or possibly even dip after that little Yes. Sort of for all. and um, until the banks uh, sort of loosen up on things, uh, yeah, that's going to be the big one, isn't it? Whether yeah. they do drop the OVRs back a little bit again, and yeah. if they come back a little bit, that will not the summer, the 
the feelings mm-hmm. or the actions finish yeah. maybe the more better we boost maybe even if that all happens together if it does go yeah, yeah. maybe we'll be boosting more than five percent for a little bit but but the thing is, it's doing its job. The bank, the, the restrictions yes. are doing its job. It's putting a lot on the market. Yeah. Um, and um, I think the good thing is, is that the, the market's not, not just free-falling. You know, yeah. there, there's some crazy things that, that um, some people in the, in the Greens and um, other parties sort of talk about that, that would just absolutely knock the market yeah. on its face. Even Canada, um, the, I think uh, Vancouver dropped about 20%. 15 to 20 percent in the last year they brought in a 15 percent stamp duty um, for foreign investors but the problem is the that affects the the people in Canada okay it's going to make the entry price cheaper but if you own a property mm. you've just lost like yeah, 150,000 yeah. which um, and, and that's that's very uncool if you've only bought in the last year or two that, that's going to hurt. Yeah, so, there's some of the policy, some of the other parties that bring it in, it scares the shit out of you what, yeah. could, what it could do to the property, yeah, property yeah, market. Yeah. So I think at the moment, levelling the market is, is not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's annoyed a lot of it's investors in the last few year, year with the old VR rules coming in, but that and the bank being so harsh with their lending has actually been the best thing to keep the economy yeah, right. where it is with that. Yeah, totally yeah. agree. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, um, so interest rates haven't really changed much. They, they, people have talked about interest rates going up and up for five years. We've, we've ignored that and, and put everything on the cheapest rate, like one-year rates, yeah. and um, you know, we've saved tens of thousands, maybe even 100,000 by doing that. And um, even this time, it's like, no, no, they are going to go up this time. And they, they've come up a, a very <laughs> little small, bit, yeah. but it's a tiny amount. And, they, and then they've kind of, they seem to have sort of plateaued a bit the last few months, I think. Mm. Um, and um, because there was always the fear that if they if they went from, from sort of around an average of around sort of late fours to 6% or something, that that was going to have a massive impact, and, and it certainly would. Mm. Um, but... Uh, Things seem to have settled down, so there's no pressure on interest rates um, making uh, repayments unaffordable for people. Yeah, and I think they're conscious too of the um, all those home buyers that brought at the peak of the market. You know, if the interest rates went up two percent, there's going to be a lot of them hurting. They don't. No yeah, one. No yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, no government want that to happen. So. No, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, very good. Okay. Well, um, just any uh, sort of final comments you want to pass on before we finish up um, the podcast or video today? Uh, yeah, I don't think I've got anything yeah, else to add, actually. We, we've well. sort of, <laughs> yeah, covered, covered things. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, I personally found things seem to have just picked up a little bit in the last few weeks. There's some agents that are saying... Same in the last, last two weeks I've seen, yeah, yeah. it's a bit slow, maybe a month or six weeks before that, but I've yeah, noticed that there was a few more buyers. There are still buyers yeah. buying, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we picked up a few listings, yeah. quite a few listings too, actually. So I mm. you know some of the other agents are out there knocking on doors, begging to get a listing. We, so far, touch wood, we haven't um, right. you know, we had to do that, so that's all good. I but think it is good that, that first home buyers are getting a little bit of a look in because it was yeah. just it was absolutely impossible at, at auctions, competing at auctions. Yeah. You, you just I couldn't hope. do it. So yeah, um, yeah, I don't think that's a bad thing. Good stuff. Oh, it's uh, good, great having someone like Renee on board and current, you know, in the market actively, self personally and on a professional level. Uh, and that's what these videos are all about, so people can um, continue to learn and see what's happening in the market today. Uh, so uh, I'd like to thank for your time today, Renee. Yeah, thank no you problem. very much. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thanks for and, having us um, on. And if you want to do us a favour, if you go to the U- uh, YouTube or tell your friends about YouTube and have a look at our channel and have a look at this you know, video and other uh, such videos that we've had, that'll help us uh, also. So um, that's all for today. Um, thank you very much. We'll right. see you next week. Okay, see you.